Okay, it's recording. So again, we will do extra office hours tonight from 6 to 8 p.m. Same Zoom link. So uh, if you plan to stay, then you don't have to leave. So stay here. Uh, I will do test review and then we'll cover the examples that we don't have time to cover. The other thing that I want to talk about is that since I have a lot of plans for today's tutorial and I know I don't have enough time to cover everything, so what I did is that I covered odd number of my examples. So I covered example one, three, odd number examples in my last tutorial. And in this tutorial, we'll do even number examples. So it's going to be same concepts, but different example. So if you need solution for the rest of the example, you can go over my recording for uh, 9102 tutorial session. And from my last tutorial session, they can go over this recording to see the solutions of other examples. So in this way, we can do as many examples as we could. Uh, so that's the plan for this week. Also, another thing is that, um, as you can see, I'm not doing the tutorial activities that I'm given because I don't think it can prepare you good for your term test. So I'm not doing it this week and also I'm not doing it next week. Uh, what I did is that I picked two questions from this week's tutorial activity and I picked one tutorial activity from next week, added to both my tutorial. Um, we'll do those and next week I will do what, whatever left and I might add some more questions. Um, and I might not do all the tutorial activities. So if you want to know the solutions to the tutorial activities, you can check other TA's tutorial recording. So Daria, she recorded, let me write it down, Daria, she recorded her tutorials and her tutorials are doing tutorial activities. So if you need solutions for tutorial activities, you can watch her video. I think her channel is called Purple Purple Math MD. Let me double check, okay? So if you need uh, the solutions for tutorial activities, you can check her recording. Or is it just purple math? Math. We I can find her. Uh, math. Purple. Wow, I can't find her. Just give me a minute. Where are you, Daria? Where are you? Math Purple MD. Sorry. It's Math Purple MD. Math Purple MD. Okay, so that's her YouTube channel. It has recordings of the uh, tutorial as well. So for the questions that I'm not doing, you can check her recordings as well. Anyway, let's start. Uh, before we start, are there any questions? Questions? I don't know. I haven't uh, I so I don't see the term test until you guys see it. So I have no idea what your term test is gonna be look like, but I think it's just gonna be a longer version of your quiz. It should not be any more difficult than your quiz. Um, but I I don't I really don't know. I don't think that's gonna happen. 
uh, will help you as much as I can to make sure that doesn't happen, okay? To make sure, uh, would you say we spent five to 10 max per question? I think you are given one hour and a half, like one and a half hours to finish the term test. Well, it's better that when you practice, you keep it, um, keep each question to be within 10 minutes. But for the term test, I think you are given more time. But I still suggest you when you try to practice, try to finish each question within 10 minutes. Okay. Cool. Let's talk about proof strategies. So uh, I plan to do proof strategies, induction and review will be difficulty similar to previous tests. I don't think you can compare this test with the other tests because for the um, previous year's test, they were giving much less time than you guys do. And also it was in person, it's not online. So that's why they have fill in the blank questions. I do not think you guys will have fill in the blank questions or multiple choice questions. Okay, I think you'll be given long answer questions only. So it's hard to compare them. Yeah, it's really hard to compare them. Five short answers. Okay, so basically you guys are giving much more time than previous tests and the format's gonna be different as well. So it's really hard to compare, but it should be fair, okay? Anyway, let's do the tutorials. So we will do proof strategies. We will do induction. We don't have time to do this. I'll do them in office hours, but let's start. So for proof strategies, we have Three different ones. The first one is called direct proof. So you do it directly. You don't need contrapositive or contradiction. Direct proof. Okay, so um, that's the first one. Um, an example of a direct proof would be something like, um, let M be a three digit number three digit, no, three digit positive integer. Prove if the sum of the digits of n is divisible by three, then n is divisible by three. This is just an example of a direct proof. Uh, we're not proving it, but you guys should try it at home, okay? It's a good practice. Anyway, the second strategy is contrapositive, which we'll talk about today. This works when you see if then statement. So this is uh, when you see if then statement. Okay. The third one is called contradiction. For contradiction, you can use it when you see if then as well. The other one a really common one is when you say something, something, no, something, 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 okay? For example, prove that there are no solutions to an equation. So that's a typical contradiction question. Well, there are much, much more, um, but this is just like some examples. So let's talk about contrapositive first. Recall contrapositive. If we have P and Q be two mathematical statements, 
the contrapositive of P implies Q is not Q implies not P. Okay, this is a contrapositive, the definition of contrapositive. One way to prove by contrapositive, that is saying that instead of proving this, we prove this. Okay, because we know those two are logically equivalent. So proving this, if this is true, then this is true as well. So instead of proving this, we prove this. Here is an example. So I did example one in my other tutorial, so we'll do example two here. Use proof by contrapositive to prove that if a, b is odd, then a and b are odd for all integers a, b. I'll give you some time to work on this and we'll take it up. Window email everyone else while you guys work on this. If you have any question, let me know, okay? No, you don't need to. This is contrapositive, not negation. Hey, can someone check if you got my email? Do you get it? That's weird. Okay, wait. You guys are from my tutorial, right? You you only get it if you're my in my tutorial. Any of you got it? I sent it through Quarkus, so it might not be focused. It might be in other. Oh, OK. 
okay. No. Okay, uh. You got it. Okay, let's wait a bit and see. Okay, some of you got it, some of you didn't. If you didn't get it, check Quarkus. Okay, check the inbox on Quarkus. It might be because you didn't set it up. So you should set up on Quarkus so that whenever we send Quarkus announcement or Quarkus email, it goes to your Utrano email. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So it means I sent it. Um, let's go back to example two. So, well, your first step is you need to write down the contrapositive of the original statement. So for the original statement, this is your P and this is your Q. This is your Q. We have P implies Q. So the contrapositive would be not Q implies not p okay not q would be a or b is all is even okay a or b is even or really important this is a common mistake okay a is even or b is even not p would give us a b is even when you write your test and they ask you to use proof by contrapositive, please write down your contrapositive, okay? Because even if everything else is wrong, you got the contrapositive correctly, you can get partial marks. So really important, please write down your contrapositive if uh, you need to prove by contrapositive. Anyway, now let's assume that This is your assumption, so let's make this assumption. So assume A is even or B is even. Since A and B, they are nothing special, okay? Because A, B, so if you switch the position of A and B, it's the same. We can use without loss of generosity, so without loss of generality, assume A is even. What if we write uh, as A and B are not odd? No, you cannot do that. That's wrong. That's not negation of Q. Okay? Because you need to negate N as well. So if you write if A or B are not odd, then that's kind of right. It's right, but it's kind of iffy. But if like your what you wrote here is wrong, okay? So uh, without loss of generosity, assume A is even. Since A is even, we can write A equals to 2K, where K is an um, integer. So AB equals to 
2k times b, which is even. And that's it. Okay, any question? You don't, you don't need to do it in this case. The reason is that um, if you assume A is even or you assume B is even, they are the same thing. That's why you can use without loss of generality. But if you don't understand what this means, it's better that you do cases. <laughs> okay. Um, if you if you know what this means, then you can do what I'm doing. If you don't know what this means, then you should do cases. But you should try to understand this. Search it up and try to understand it because after you understand this, what I mean by cases, because we assume A is even or B is even. When we talk about cases is like case one, A is even, case B, B is even. Does that make sense? So negation is not not. What does that mean? I don't, if not true, the not is false. Huh? I don't really understand your question here. Anyway, going back to this. We have to show our three cases where A is even, B is even, A even. <laughs> you don't need to. You don't need to. Because here, you, you only need to show if A is even or B is even. Here, I didn't, I don't, I, if you assume A is even, I'm not assuming B is even or odd. So B can be whatever it could be. So you don't need to do four cases or three cases, okay? Because here I just left it as B. I don't need to let it be even or odd. And that still solves the question. So if you want to do cases, you do two cases. Either you let A is even or you let B is even. But in this case, since they are the same, so I used without loss of generality and I did one case only, okay? Um, let's move on to contradiction. So proof by contradiction is saying that if we have two statements and we need to prove P implies Q, then what you need to do is you assume the negation of this. Okay, you assume the negation of this, which is P and not Q. And then you just try to derive a contradiction from there. So that's contra proof by contradiction. You assume the negation of the original statement. Again, since I did example three in my other tutorial, we will do example four in this tutorial, okay? So here's my example. Prove that there are no rational solutions to x plus x cubed equals to one. I'll give you some time to think about it while I answer other questions. Are there any cases in which the only way to prove something would be proof it's converse? No, no. Because the converse of a statement has nothing to do with the original statement. But you said assume if and only if. Well, if you have if and only if statement, so if you have P if and only if Q, then the converse of this and itself, they are the same thing. 
Q if and only if P and P if and only if Q they are the same thing. So that, that that's pointless. Okay, but if you have P implies Q, then it's converse. The truth value of its converse and the truth value of the original, they don't affect each other. Anyway, try example four. Q, Q, this.
Okay, that took me a while to write everything down. Uh, talking about it should be fast. So we need to prove by contradiction, which means we we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Let's talk about this first. So since there is no uh wait, what what did I say? Oh since the ask you to prove that there are no rational solutions to this and you want to use contradiction so we assume the negation of this so we assume that there is a rational solution x such that x plus x cubed equals to one so that's your first step okay you assume this is true um since our x is a rational number that means we can write it as a form of m over n, where m and are integer, n cannot be zero, and the GCD of them is one. GCD means greatest common divisor. Greatest common divisor. Okay, so, um. Uh, you can also say, uh, let me think, what what did you guys know? What do you guys know now? Uh, oh, you, you can also say um, n is in its lowest term. So another way to say this, m over n is in lowest term. In the last term, yep. Which means, um, so for example, if you have four over two, you can simplify it to two over one, or something like six over three can be simplified to one over two. So it's always in this term. We cannot have those lowest term or GCD. Anyway, greatest common divisor is one. Anyway, uh, let's side note. So since it's rational number, we can write it as this. This this line is really important. Please don't forget about this, okay? So now you can sub it back to your equation. So that's gonna give us m over n plus m over m cube equals to one. And you multiply by n cube, that's gonna give you m n cube plus m cube equals to n cube. Now you can discuss cases. So the cases we're going to discuss is we can discuss the priority of n and m. So we can the first the first case I'm discussing is when m is even and n is odd. So since m is even and n is odd, we have m n cube cube and the sum of them are all even but our n cube is odd so that's a contradiction you cannot have an even number equals to an odd number so that's the first contradiction the second contradiction was when m is odd n is even so you um, find the priority of each term and then the sum of them will reach contradiction so one two four simple the only thing that I want to talk about is case three. When they are both even, the contradiction is that then the GCD of them is not one. Okay, it's at least two. Why is that? If they're both even, then we know that they, they can both be divisible by two. So that means the greatest common divisor is not one anymore. Okay, so that's a contradiction when they are both even. Are there any question about this? What if you just prove one case? If you only prove one case, then you cannot conclude that there are no rational solution. You have to talk about every single possible cases. Any other question?
Oh, I think one of you said something. I said I'll answer later. Let me check. Oh, uh, one of you asked. There is no real solution either, though. There is a real solution. Okay, there is a real solution. There is one, because. Um, I don't think you guys know this, but for a polynomial of degree three, you have at least one real solution. Okay. So there is one. Anyway, if no question, let's move on to induction. So I will do, I will do example five in office hours. So let's do induction. So induction principle of mathematical induction states that for all n in natural number, let p of m be a mathematical statement. If p1 is true, so the first statement is true. And for any k in natural number, p of k implies p of k plus 1. So if we have those two conditions, then p of n is true for all n in natural number. For this one, uh, induction, think about dominoes. Okay, it's we have infinitely many. This is just saying that if the first one, the first one fall, and if you pick any of the domino, Let's say we pick this one. If you pick any of them, this one fall is gonna um is gonna affect the next one fall. So if this one fall, the next one fall as well. Okay. If that's true, then every single domino you have is gonna fall. Another way to think about this is that well, since p one is true, and for any k in natural number p k implies p k plus one. So that means P1 implies P2 is true, and P2 implies P3 is true, and so on. Okay, that's why everything is true. So that's the principle itself. Here we have a marking scheme of induction questions. So let's read this for the next five minutes. I want to talk about some common mistakes and that's the end of the tutorial and we'll move on to uh, office hours, okay? So let's look at this marking scheme. The first point is that the stated P of N explicitly and correctly. So you need to tell me what your predicate is. So uh, let's say if you are given a question, Let's say they ask you to prove this. This is a question. You need to tell me what your PN is. So that's your first step. We'll talk about how to find that later. The second step is that you need to prove the base case explicitly and correctly. And specifically, it says do not award any points if the student starts with a conclusion and then derives a true statement. This is a common mistake. A lot of students, they assume what they need to prove and they don't, they derived a basic fact. This is not acceptable, okay? If you do that, you don't get mark. This is a common mistake. Common mistake. The third point gives for your inductive hypothesis. So your inductive hypothesis needs to be explicitly assumed for a particular n for a natural number. So if you wrote something like for all n in natural number or for any n in natural number, you don't get the mark, okay? Those are wrong. Also, whenever you used your inductive hypothesis, you need to point it out correctly. 
So whenever you use it, you need to put in the bracket says by induct inductive hypothesis or by IH. The last point will be given if your induction step is correct. Okay, again, if you start with your conclusion and derives a true statement, you don't get the mark. That's rough work and rough work, you don't get the mark for rough work. Really important, let me highlight this because this is a common mistake as well. So here, common mistake. All right, any questions so far? Question? Nope, okay. Um, if no question, this is the end of the tutorial. Uh, I will give you guys a 10 minute break, actually 12 minute break. So um, we will start the office hour at 6.10. Okay, just in case, uh, just to wait the other students to come in. So we'll start office hour at 610. You can, it's he, it's the same Zoom link. So if you, if you're gonna stay for office hours, you, you don't have to leave, just stay here and we'll start at 610. Let me write it down just in case the other students come in. So. It will be recorded. Yes, it will be recorded. Everything will be recorded. So if you can't attend, that's OK. 